It's a beautiful morning. <laughs> I kid you not. I have, um, what have I been doing? Just, because uh, right now, I just finished my uh, push-ups. Because, um, I literally stop every five miles and do like 25 push-ups while I stretch my body. <laughs> so that's what I just sort of been doing lately when I'm running. And it's becoming more of no time. You know, I just make sure oh, I started early. That way, pretty much, even though there's a mileage involved, I am actually going for time on my feet. Uh, what's behind me right here? It's still kind of, it started out a little cold this morning, but it looked like it warmed up a little bit. Plus the birds are still crying anyway, so I'm um, that cold weather might not be uh, on its way very soon. So I got my light on. So what I've been doing, I started doing meditative yoga because like right now, the more I stretch, the more meditative it becomes because I always make sure I do 50 push-ups you know, slow to my pace. When I get tired, if it's just 10, I'll stretch my body ooh, on the floor. Then I'll get to, by the time I get to 50 years, as long as I get to 50, that's what I've been doing. So I'll get up, you know, do the regular yoga pose. And I would, within that section, I would do like 200 push-ups. <laughs> and it's really amazing. The 50 push-up is getting quicker before it was taking me actually about, 20 minutes now it's becoming like 10 and 15 minutes so which means very soon I'll be able to do a hundred in less than 25 minutes so today excited you know for my journey I am amazed about the intelligence of the body <laughs> The body has a lot of intelligence in it and I'm actually blown away by it. I know when we take a yoga class, we sort of look at it to be, um, oh, it's a girly thing. But when it is done properly, and I mean, uh, using that facility on that floor, that yoga mat, and doing push-ups very slowly like going up and down not the fast one that we're normally do is absolutely amazing because when you do your push-ups very slow <laughs> you have no choice but to slow down when you're stretching your body a lot of people go to the yoga class we do it so fast but when it's done and i kid you not when they, they, i always had the word sick within and I truly, truly, truly believe that now because when you're looking for that higher consciousness, like a lot of people always talk about, you have to seek from within. It's from within where that energy is, whatever you want to call it. And it's almost like um, a drug of life that just keeps you mellow no matter the situation. The funniest thing is, ah, uh, let me look around me here, what am I seeing? There's one star, I don't know if I can see that star, but there's one star here. So this is where I stopped this morning and do my push-ups before I continue going. <laughs> there's a saying that says, look from within, and it sounds very, uh, yeah, whatever, but that thing is true. I, I cannot believe it. I'm excited every day and I guess sometimes the one thing that kind of spooked me a little bit is this whole thing called the material thing because like everyone else you want to have plenty of it you know you want to work in gold you want to work you know you want to have that nice car nice house 
but the peace of mind that I have is absolutely amazing. You know, the, the inner peace is almost like, wow, I wish someone had taught me this years ago. Like, for example, when I was playing pro soccer, it would have been a total different. If I had the discipline that I had right now, playing professional soccer, oh, my biscuit. And I can play, too. I miss football, mate. I can play. If I had that discipline, holy biscuit. But I guess, you know, that is what is a harsh lesson to learn. And once you learn it, you, it doesn't matter whatever sport or whatever you're passionate about, you become very, 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 very disciplined with it. I got really passionate about getting up in the morning to meditate, to read and just go out there and pray. It's almost like every step I take is like I'm saying a prayer. You know, uh, when I stop, it's not just stopping. I will jog, run. If I have to go to the bathroom, I'll walk, then continue. So it's no rush. Anybody can pass me. It's not, it's, it's just funny because all I'm thinking of in my head, I have this certain period of time and I want to do 15 miles. So if it's just three hours, so that three hours is mine if I have to go do a job. So I've got that space for three hours for the family, for the friends. So it's pretty much just like, it's no time involved for me because I, I begin to realize that those moments, I will never get back. And each step I take, I make sure I enjoy it. Like the whole concept of yoga blow me the biscuit away because um, when you practice in yoga, when you put uh, when you stretch your body and every single part of your body is involved from your fingers to your toes, your nails, you stretch your mouth because there's a muscle everywhere. It's really, really amazing. And especially when you do your little leg movement in your poses and you move your leg, it's really amazing what that thing can do. Like I was saying, um, when you run one mile, do 10 push-ups. If you run two miles, do 10 push-ups. When you run three miles, you do 30 push-ups. Four miles, 40 push-ups. Five miles, 50 push-ups just for that day, but make sure you are doing it very slow on a yoga mat. It doesn't matter if all you could do is two push-ups at one go to start with. It is okay. Take a rest, get back and do another two. When you begin to do your push-up where you are letting gravity lift you, you're building strength and upper body strength right here. And what happens is you don't have to, you don't have to do the 50 at one go. You could do the 50 and rest. And that's where the whole yoga comes into play because every time you stop and twist that body and just do a little stretch of your own, then do it, then continue. If 50 push-ups takes you an half an hour, it is okay. Because when you do that 50 push-ups every single day, it is amazing the smile that you got. It is really funny because I see a lot of runners getting injured. The injuries that you have is not from you running so much or from you jacking up your body. The injuries are actually from the stress that you are carrying and a lot of anger. <laughs> you know, because uh, people are so quick to talk about, yeah, he runs too much, that's why there's no. The injuries, because all you have to do is, we are in the information age right now. You can Google anything. There's a bunch of information about how to breathe, breathing techniques, and what stresses does to our body. And as a human being, the way we were really, really designed, we are to stretch our body every single day. Even though we don't do it because we just get caught up with life. But those life that we get caught up with, we miss too many important moments. Like there's a bear crying right now. I think he's actually crying from that side. You know, I listen to it. And right behind me right there, it wasn't as bright as that, but the daylight has actually had a little bit to his energy. So those little, little moments I begin to cherish a lot. So what I'm saying about the push-ups, do it slow. If all you could do is just go down very slow on your yoga mat, one, two, 
three, stop. Take like a child pose. Stretch your body. And it's really funny. This is not something that you read in a book. I've used it to heal my, but almost heal my body. I said to myself, I want to sit in a lotus pose now. So to get into a lotus pose is actually a lot harder than I thought it was. So the more I run, the more I do the yoga, the meditation. And it's actually funny how you can actually build your own body just by doing your calisthenics push-ups very slow. So today I'm uh, coming from a conscious place. Because we always seek that thing called God, energy, higher self. We want that happiness. But what I begin to realize lately is right here within. And what's so crazy is it will not sink in properly because it's coming from somebody like me. You know, because there's something which I call uh, unconscious prejudice where we've labeled any, everything. So if a brown guy like me decided he wants to study, meditate, read, and do all type of things and do yoga, it means he's broke. But when somebody that's a lighter skin or an Indian descent does it, he's called a guru. <laughs> which I kind of just... <laughs> <laughs> which really makes me laugh you know because uh, I, I, I laugh a little like oh my goodness it's doing the same thing that I do when a black guy does it it means he's broke but when an Indian or someone that's white does it it's called a guru and I think that subconscious mind the prejudice that we carry has nothing to do with color it has a lot to do with the ignorance it, the ignorance of the subconscious mind that we carry and also also another thing most racist people, it doesn't matter what color they are, always claim to have a religious belief. That's why it's very important to get out of the circle. Let's get out of this circle of putting someone in a box. Because what we're doing every time we put someone in the box, we, how do I say, throw away the opportunity to learn. It doesn't matter who you are, you all have wisdom in you, whether you're brown, white, black, you have an intelligence in you. And the whole thing about, oh yeah, a brown guy does it, he's broke, and some Indian guy does it. it you know, I don't want to say, especially the Indian, how do I say this, yogis these days, I have much respect for them. But a lot of them, when they come here, in an essence, even though they claim to be that guru entity and they, they wear the facade, deep down subconsciously, when you look in their eyes, they're not really that guru that they claim to be. Because we were very quick to judge to talk about the preachers. Yeah, the preachers do this, the preachers do that. No, every culture is coming here to do that too because they always claim to have that guru, that they are some type of guru. So let's watch out. So before I continue this run, you know, which, uh, how many miles have I done? Like six, seven miles so far. You know, uh, I'm gonna be doing so. Man, look at that behind me. Daylight is coming up a little bit more. Absolutely amazing. I don't know if you can see it. So let me continue with this run and then uh, give love. Give a gift to somebody. It doesn't have to be money. Just listen. This is the time that a lot of people go through depression. This is the time that we suffered a lot, uh, especially suicide and all those things. This is the time to just listen and don't say nothing. You'd be really amazed how many people we can save. Happy Wednesday and let me finish this run. It's getting a little cold here. As you can see, my mouth is running or whatever and my nose is running. So, one love.